it is. It it was nice and it was crowded. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, there's a lot of people there. You go over to Cage Cove. Sure did. Uh, you'll see a lot of Gregory tombstones. Oh, really? Uh, a lot of the Gregory's over there. In fact, you, there's one big rock called Gregory's Bought. Huh. And uh, some distant relation of ours, you know, yeah. that, that lived there. And I was interesting to read a little history. They never joined the Civil War. They never approved of the Yankees, and they didn't approve of the rebels. They just kind of, in that little community, just stayed isolated. Well, and, and and that's very isolated anyway. It is. I mean, that's... <laughs> I tell you, some of those old cabins, I, I, I'd i walk out of there and think about somebody years ago walking out there with a hot cup of coffee and looking at that terrain and up to that beautiful sky. And I, that'd be the way to live now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. Now, there's three old churches back in there. There's yes, the one, one's primitive, one's missionary. One's missionary, and then and then I think there's a Methodist. I yep, yep. I, I think. But if, you, if 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 you go to the graveyards on the uh, old primitive church, mm -hmm. you'll find Gregory's and all those names. And you move over to the uh, missionary, and you'll also find the names over there. So I'm sure. Oh, really? It came during that time of splits, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I I'll tell you, it's something to see. I mean, it yeah. is. It is. It's a, It's beautiful country. It is indeed. It is indeed. And All of my right. folks came from Kentucky originally, mm -hmm. and uh, I we always just loved the bluegrass of Kentucky. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just. It's 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 just pretty, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I enjoyed it. Oh. <clears throat> and saw so we saw several bear down yeah. there so uh but, but you're right to step out on that porch with a cup of coffee and have that view yeah and that's something uh, that, that's what just hit me was <laughs> you're right that'd be a beautiful way to wake up in the morning <laughs> that absolutely would you're you ain't a kidding you ain't a kidding Amen. <laughs> and it was correct like i said it was but i think everybody was apparently people like to look at the like to look at the leaves yeah so there were a bunch of them down there taking pictures of leaves so yeah <laughs> mm. yeah one time i went there and i thought about renting a bicycle you can rent bicycles you don't drive drive through that cage cove but i didn't figure my legs would take it <laughs> that that's a long well it's 11 miles yeah it's uh got a few hills <laughs> there is a few hills there was one couple that was walking it, but but now this old boy was driving. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of know my limitations, and I wasn't about to walk eleven miles. So. <laughs> mm. I don't see John on there. Is he on there? Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Oh, there he is. Well, oh, 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 there's two Johns. Mm. Well, two Johns. <laughs> I guess Brother Hoyt must not have his volume up or something. He, he, he's got his microphone muted. Brother okay. Hoyt, your microphone is muted. Um... I don't know whether yours is at the top or at the bottom, but if you want to talk, you just you need to unmute it. And if you want to turn the camera on, you can. Kissy, stop, baby. <laughs> I'm going to put you out. Big Ben Nelson, you. Yeah, thrilling. <laughs> As she oh, drops her head against your chin. Yeah. She's daddy's girl. That's not the cat you took to the vet, is it? No, no, Dust Bunny. She's a 
Look, she's a little black. White. She stayed at the vet. Oh, okay. That was that was my hope is that they would keep her. She just has her. I thought it was upper respiratory, but it's just a sinus, really bad sinus infection. He said her lungs were clear, so yeah. I can identify with that. I've been I've been fighting that for two weeks. And I haven't had any yet this year. I haven't either. <laughs> I seem to have it every year when the weather changes. Yeah, I usually do, but I've been blessed this year so far. We had a We had a, a lime plant in my hometown, do bagged lime. And I had a cousin that when they'd come into town, it'd take about 30 minutes for her to stop up hmm. from the lime. The and lime, yeah. Those of us that lived there never Never thought anything about it. Is I know. that right? When I, when I had a print shop, we used alcohol in our water. Yeah. Well. yeah. And people would come into the uh, shop and they said, Ooh, how do you stand in here? And I said, What? That smell. I said, Stay in here long enough and you won't ever smell it. <laughs> nope. You will not. Yeah. About the only thing I'd I have to wonder if I could get used to it would be a paper mill. <laughs> oh, man. They, they are gross a half mile away. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Mm. What, what is are it, we like supposed to smell? Oh, I don't know what it is, but it's awful. It's a paper coating plant that stinks like burnt cabbage. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That is bad. <laughs> yeah. What were we supposed to talk about? The uh, eternal justification? I, uh, yeah, I asked the question about what, the, mm -hmm. what was the position of most of the old Baptists regarding justification, whether or not it was eternal. And and you I just split about 50-50. Yeah, I noticed a dispute uh, between Trot and some of the others in the signs of the time. Uh, regarding that subject, and I was just kind of curious as to how y'all felt about that. I agree with Trot myself. I, I, I used to be, uh, I used to hold the eternal justification position as Gil and Brian. Yeah. And, and I think mainly that was because I didn't know any other thing but that. Particularly Brian's little book. I, man, when I got that, I just ate that up. But then, when I, I first found out about Trot and his position on it, I thought, well, that's just weird. And then it hit me, well, yeah, what existed in eternity and what was united to Christ didn't need any justification. The Adamic man is what needed justification and it didn't have an existence then. Because the Adamic man is what's the, what is the sinner. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. that which was united to Christ didn't need it. And I thought, well, you're right. Now the, the purpose to justify and the predestination Mm -hmm. the predestinated plan and decree of God to justify was there, but actually eternally justified, no, you didn't need it. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's my view. Agreed. Now, Dud Dudley, I think, took exception to him. Did, did Gilbert Beebe? Gilbert Beebe never really weighed in on that, if I remember right. I couldn't find it. I just curious. I 
yeah, I, I don't remember him him ever weighing in on it, other than just to kind of mediate the discussion. <laughs> um, I have to think though he leaned toward Trot's position if if he uh, if he was going to take one. Um, Because the only thing I know that they disagreed on was uh, some eschatological things and um, I read that and angels. And uh, he, he objected to something he had preached somewhere about the judgment, I think. Yeah. 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 yeah he, he held to a general judgment, if I remember right. And B.B. said, God's children will never be judged because they were judged in Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, there was, a, you know, people say, well, what was the old Baptist position on this? Well, there were two. And they got along for the most part. Mm -hmm. Till somebody like Trot dared put it on paper. <laughs> well, and if, if you notice that article, he didn't sign his name to it. He signed it Waldensis, mm -hmm. an inhabitant of the Valley of Acor. Right. He published it anonymously because he thought some people would object to it just because he wrote it. He wrote it, yeah. Well, let, let me uh, let me explore your minds a little bit. Um, when the Bible says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, who is the us? Brother John, that one's to you. Oh, I believe it's the elect. It's the eternal children. And they were in Christ, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. That that's my that's my issue, I guess. That's my problem. I don't I don't quite know how to fit eternal vital union, and the operative word to me is eternal, mm -hmm. with a justification that is. I don't know the proper word here, but mm -hmm. a justification that is brought by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, if we were blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. would not justification which is merely I think the application of Christ's righteousness correct? Mm -hmm. Yes mm -hmm. well it says that we're justified by his blood in Romans that's true that's true yeah mm -hmm. but the children as I see it didn't need to be justified until they came into this, we came into the world. The eternal we had, and, and what one of the things that that both Trot and Wilson Thompson hammer on is that justification is a forensic legal term. Okay. And therefore, if there was no law breaking, mm -hmm. then there's no need of justification. If there's no sin, right. there's no need of justification. Right, right. So that which was united to Christ is his seed was as perfect as Christ was and mm -hmm. needed no justification. Yeah. Amen. Mm hmm. Until we go ahead. What about glor <laughs> glorification? Those who glorified. It says past tense. Glorified. Yes. Yeah, it is past tense, isn't it? Whom he justified, them he also glorified. Well. Well, concerning faith, okay, let me, let me, we'll get to you. 
Yeah. Faith. That's yeah, kind of next. Go my ahead. Issue, my issue is that there's an act of faith. We believe sometimes. Sometimes we don't have any at all. Right. So that can't be the faith that justifies. No, absolutely not. We're justified by the faith of Christ, not faith in Christ. Right. Amen. I agree with that, but we uh, we receive the knowledge of it, right? Through an act of faith. But there again, is it is it is it our faith or is it Christ's faith imparted to us that receives it? Faith he gives us to believe it. Grateful hearts is love to prize. Right. I, I agree as, with that. As the um, hymn writer says. Right. You know, we can rightly call it our faith just like um, because it's given to us, but it's still his originally. Yeah. It's a gift from God very clearly. Absolutely. It's got to be or we're in trouble. Right. At least I am. Y'all may have faith. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. If I did, it wouldn't be worth much. But. Yeah, I, uh, I have a, I have a problem. I, my, my brain's a little thick. Always have been. But I, ha I have a problem reading those scriptures, such as who has saved us and ca called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which mm -hmm. was given us in Christ mm -hmm. before the world began. Right. All right. Did that seed in Christ need grace? I run into a problem <sighs> in my mind. Maybe I'm thinking of it too hard or too much. Well, we, we're good at doing that, the human, human nature is. Um, well, let's say this, and, and maybe, maybe we can piece something together here. Mm -hmm. um, Andy, get your tail out of daddy's face. Um, it was an act of grace by which we were chosen in Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we were given by grace and in grace. Um, before the world began, according to His own purpose and grace. So that could be just the grace of election. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm just I'll just stating to, this I'll off the top of my head. I'll no, it doesn't it. sound bad. But there you got his purpose. And his purpose is is uh, salvation. And you got the grace which gave them to Christ. And and his purpose, which was to provide a, a bride and a seed and for his son. Mm -hmm. Well, if if and I know everybody would agree that Christ Jesus from all eternity mm -hmm. was righteous. Yes. yes. There was no sin in him. Mm -hmm. Although God's purpose had determined to make him sin for us, mm -hmm. there was none in him. That's right. And if as his seed we were in him, don't we uh, partake of that righteousness? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It has to be. Well, in, in my lifetime, I don't know how to rephrase it, but when God called me by his grace, I won't go into all the details, but when he called me by my grace, I view that as me receiving the knowledge of that which I had from all eternity in mm -hmm. Christ Jesus. That That's makes sense. It. Correct. He hath brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Through the gospel. Amen. It was already there. Right. It's uh if he if we were blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ, and I have a difficulty of of separating 
the eternal seed from where it's planted in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. but if we had that, it, it appears to me that all of the blessings for God's people were stored up in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. the righteous one. Yep. And that Christ Jesus came into this world to secure those blessings to us as fallen creatures. Amen. Amen. Yes. If God gave us those things, now this sounds almost uh, blasphemous, so I got to be careful. <laughs> but if if God gave us those things in Christ before the world began, Christ didn't purchase those things for us, right? Right. He purchased us for them. Absolutely. Is that a mm -hmm. proper saying? Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. It makes sense to me. Yeah, he didn't purchase any blessings. No. Mm -hmm. No, he purchased hey, his people. That was a free gift of God. That's right. Well, I have to rethink, but at this point, I still believe in eternal justification. <laughs> at well, this we, I can't speak for any of these other brethren, but I won't cut you off because of it. <laughs> uh, I won't either. I, uh, a guy once told me, I said something about eternal justification back in the 80s, I guess it was. And uh, preacher and he looked at me and said you believe in that as i heard do he said and i'll use his word then you're a stinking hard shell <laughs> and i guess he thought that would offend me <laughs> but i accepted that and i told him i accepted that <laughs> i would have said thank you <laughs> yeah a stinking hard shell stinking hard shell <laughs> 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 I can't. Uh, Thank you. I can't figure out why they think that's such a divide, the de derisive term. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess it is them. Yep. <laughs> are, are you recording this session, brother? I am. I'm gonna shut up then. <laughs> I am recording it. The. Uh, oh. Uh, I forgot to record it last week, but I, I'm recording it this week. I see something blinking up here is the reason I ask. <laughs> That's probably the reason. The, um, you know, you, you look in the old histories and it says uh, uh, these anti-mission Baptists were referred to as, as hard shells or iron sides. Or, yeah. and that, you know, I thought about that iron sides a lot. Well, lo and behold, in the next county south of here, Harrison County, I haven't found it yet. It must be out in the field somewhere. Is the Ironside Baptist Cemetery. Really? <laughs> that's oh, yeah. what it's called. And that's the only time I've ever seen that in, in a... a Reference to a church or a cemetery or a, a meeting ground or anything like that. So, I had a I had a I had a book in my library about the uh, history of uh, the Baptists in Southern Illinois. Can't yeah, remember. Achilles Coffee, sir. Achilles Coffee. Yeah, and and they even call them Whiskey Baptists. Yeah. Well, here's your whiskey one. Baptist. Woburn, Massachusetts. There was a church that existed up there through the early 50s, 1950s. The Old School Baptist Church of Woburn, that's north of Boston. It was part of the main predestinarian association. And so I call up there to the library at Woburn or the Historical Society or someplace, I think the library, the town library, and I say, do you have any information about the old school Baptist church that was there in that town? And she said, uh, never heard of an old school Baptist church. I said, really? I said, well, it was there up until the early 50s, and I, I named some of the later pastors. And uh, 
and we got talking and it was originally called the something independent Baptist church. But then she says, why you mean the jug Baptist? Jug Baptist. The jug Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> I said, probably. <laughs> yes, that's probably just what I mean. <laughs> I know I know in that history in Illinois, uh, they were known as regular Baptists. Yes. Yeah. Thompson always called himself a regular Baptist. I didn't recall that. Yes, he never called himself anything other than a regular Baptist. Parker never called himself anything other than a regular predestinarian. Mm. He added the word predestinarian in it in his. Mm. I was I was really surprised. I reread that coffee not long ago, and he doesn't mention Parker at all. I. <clears throat> That's the one that he, he, in that particular book, he showed how the Baptists split in four different directions. Whether it was during the time of the abolitionists and uh, yep. several things going on. And he was, the, at the time he wrote the book, he was the only living person that attended the last association meeting when it split four different ways. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. You had the abolition Baptist, you had the missionary Baptist, you had the, I think the regular Baptist, and then you had the means Baptist. No. Didn't one remember a lot were the Campbellites involved in around there at that time? Because they it was later. Uh, yeah, it was later than the Campbell. Right. They's already gone. Yeah. Um in fact Parker even even said that 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 he didn't have much uh, many Campbellites to oppose in Illinois. Wow. That he he all of that was in uh, Tennessee and Kentucky huh. when he then of course when he published the paper Campbell himself took notice of him and there were several articles in the Church Advocate against Campbell. Being typed. Hmm. You get to go next. Is that Gabriel down there on the iPhone? He ain't listening. Brother Napier, what how do you feel about eternal justification? I look at it, it was in purpose. They were complete in Christ, but the foreknowledge of God, knowing that they would be of the descendants of Adam, it would be accomplished in time. I don't have an issue using the term eternal justification, but there has to be a reality to the doctrine, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. and uh, the wonderful foreknowledge of God uh, he knew every transgression and he meted that judgment out upon Christ in complete justifying of that uh, transgression mm -hmm. so all of those sins were imputed to Christ from all eternity well, I believe that's what Brother Job said. He said, Thou uh, seal my transgressions up in a bag. Mm -hmm. I don't believe he was in the grave when he said that. Right. So, therefore, I believe it was in the foreknowledge and purpose of God. If they were already sealed up, God knew they would be uh, uh, the transgressions, what they would be, and he laid them upon his son. What, uh, what what uh, what if anything is uh, in in my thinking about the Old Testament saints such as Abraham? Okay, 
We know that Christ hadn't died, but yet it was by faith. And I think that's probably the object of faith. He, uh, he viewed Christ and was given the faith to believe on him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but none of that had actually taken. We live on this side of the cross. They lived on the other side. Is there a distinction or difference? Same focal point. They look toward, we look back. One central point which is Christ. Yes. Well, let me ask you a question now. We'll, 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 we'll have a little discussion on this and, and, uh, and see what we come up with. Paul doesn't tell you to look back. He says, I press forward, keeping my eyes on the mark for the high calling. Mm-hmm. So how does that go with looking back? Looking back at the occurrence to give you the uh, the hope that you was included in that work and then to press toward it. And I must say that I feel woefully mm -hmm. inadequate in what I consider pressing forward. Well, join the club then. <laughs> it sounds good what you said, brother. Rome, Romans 5 says, therefore, after he talked about Christ being delivered mm -hmm. for our offenses and raised again for our justification, therefore, mm -hmm. being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How would you explain being justified by faith? Wilson Thompson said the comma's in the wrong place. It has to be the faith of Christ. He mm -hmm. says, Wilson His Thompson faith. says it should be, therefore being justified, comma, we have peace with God. By, by faith, faith we have peace. By faith we have access. We so, have, yeah. I didn't ever remember reading that, a Thompson. <laughs> yeah, it's in the Triumphs of Truth, I believe. I missed it. So let me deal with one of these lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he um, he said the comma was in the wrong place. He said uh, he said look at the look at the context. He said therefore it talks about. Uh, Justification there in uh, the the chapter right above, mm -hmm. and he says that uh, that comma's wrong. They very well be right. Mm. Yeah. Well, we know that ninety percent of the punctuation, if not ninety five percent of the punctuation in the New Testament, was put there by the translators. Right. It's not in Greek text. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Brother Larkin. Yeah, it could be wrong. Brother Larkin, when you get a chance, I want to get a Septuagint, but uh, send it to my but either text or email. Okay. If you tell me now, I'm not going to remember what you said. My memory is getting so bad. All right. I can do that. Thank you, brother. Well, that, that's the way Wilson Thompson described it because. <laughs> He says uh, he was delivered for our offenses. He was raised again for our justification, therefore being justified. He already told us how he was, we were justified, mm -hmm. therefore being justified. By faith, we have peace with God right. through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the faith gives us peace, not 
actual justification. And there's there's a good that's a good point, I think. Mm-hmm. First time I ever read that, it floored me. Mainly that an old Baptist from that time period would question the punctuation in the English Bible. <laughs> <laughs> that that got me as much as anything hey 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 robert on that yeah. one it says i press toward the mark mm-hmm. the prize of the high calling mm-hmm. i think if you i'm reading it right now it says brethren i that's who he's talking to brethren oh yeah i count not myself to have apprehended and that was proved on the road to Damascus. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, is he talking about um, uh, Moses' law and the Pharisaical uh, covenant then, or the you know the covenant, and reaching forth into those things which are before. So he's looking toward is he's looking he's pressing toward the mark. Um, the gospel dispensation that that was brought in is that what that could have meant that's what that's the way i took it is forgetting those things which are behind was uh everything he learned at the feet of gamaliel Mm -hmm. forget that mess okay yeah yeah yeah, i was reading it there and 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 that's how i took it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what what day did i talk about that was that Monday or was that Thursday last week? I can't remember. Oh, really? But no. I mentioned that text. You okay. did. I think it was this week. I think it was Monday. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was you down there. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in and out because I'm traveling, so oh, I'm you just are. happy to be in to hear. Yeah, I'm, we're getting ready to go on vacation to, to Indiana for three weeks, so we're just trying, but that's why I had sent you an email about I'll be in and out on the, the Zoom meeting. In the end. I interrupt while you all were talking to say, can you hear me? You know, but I, I saw that you allowed me in. I don't have a <laughs> camera, so you're just hearing my voice. That's all right. And happy birthday. Ooh. Happy birthday to you, Elder. Oh, yeah. Well, happy birthday. You. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Birthday. How old are you now, brother? Dirt. <laughs> 65. <laughs> uh, dirt is right. <laughs> 65. Brother, you're catching up to me. <laughs> it's young I'm trying, but I'll never get dead. there. <laughs> brother Gregory. Yes. In light of the question there about eternal justification and the passage has just been referred to, he said that I may apprehend that which I am apprehended for. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's a pretty big obstacle for me to get around, to wrap my mind around Mm -hmm. that I can apprehend what the scriptures, I believe, reveal I am apprehended for in Christ. Mm -hmm. I keep looking at self. Mm -hmm. No way to apprehend that that can ever be of any benefit. Right. That's right. And uh, whether we look at eternal justification or justification in time mm-hmm. really we're secondary to it because God has purposed it and accomplished it and uh, I go back I think the uh, theme of eternal uh, children is the 139th Psalm mm-hmm. and I believe that book I believe that passage Sometimes I just can't wrap my head around all of it. Absolutely. And that's the truth. Yeah, you, know, you just have to bow in awe and wonder sometimes. Absolutely. Hey, 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 yeah, that's true. Amen. 
Mm-hmm. You're breaking up. Especially the ones. Okay. Can you hear me at all? Yes. Now, now you're coming through. Believe, try to believe that you have to know a lot. Elder, that you're in Christ, you're in Christ. Whether you're a babe or whether you can articulate all the doctrines. Anybody? Yeah, I understand. Uh, I think what you're saying. We're secure in Him. You know, whether That's we know right. it all or we know little. What you know in your head ain't important. Amen. Amen. It's what's in your heart. Mm. Now this interlinear says, brethren, I myself consider not to have overtaken, apprehended, overtaken, but in forgetting the things indeed behind, forgetting indeed the things behind, but the things in front stretching out further toward the aim I pursue unto the victory prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. It kind of, that apprehend it seems to be overtaken in one place and uh, Something a little different in another. Two different, two different words, maybe. I'm, I'm gonna have to look at that a little, uh, a little more deeply. I think. I, I, I'm very easily confused. I know that, but I, I, I have a difficult time of righteousness is imputed to us. Are y'all are you saying, Brother Robert, that that's just to the fleshly man? Mm. Yes. Just yes. Has to be. Because the spiritual man's already righteous. He doesn't Correct. need anything imputed yeah. to him. Amen. Yes. The the new man is created after God in true holiness. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But this Adamic man. That's another story. That's where the doctrine of adoption is very crucial. Yeah, I'll go along with that. We tried to intertwine, I believe, some of the blessings that we received for being adopted and tried to integrate that in with the new man, which does not apply. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I always wondered about for years was heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Mm, big statement. Heirs and joint heirs. Correct. Two different things. If if I give Wayne, $500 in my will, and I give John $500 in my will, then they are both my heirs. But they are not joint heirs. Mm -hmm. If, however, I give y'all, all all of you, interest, uh, equal shares of that property I have in Oklahoma, Mm-hmm. And say y'all own that ten acres together. You're joint heirs of it. Mm-hmm. Could could it be in one of the different offices of Christ? 
it has to do with the the air and the joint air. The air is made in air by adoption. It's the old man. Uh -huh. And the joint heir is the spiritual man that was united with Christ. And we all have the a joint interest in everything that Christ has. Amen. But we have an individual interest in the Adamic part. Mm -hmm. When we're adopted into that family on high and we get the fullness of the inheritance. We're double inheritors. That comes we're, to that, that would come to fruitation when we experience the resurrection, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. The full That's when we seven. get it. Yeah. How, how does the scripture that says that Christ is the heir of all things fit with that? Well, he's he's the, the one we're a joint heir with. So as he is the heir of all things, we jointly in him by virtue of that union, are joint heirs with him in all things. Like when he said, uh, all things of the Father are mine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you As go. creator. I know, I know there's a, a lot of people, I'm sure y'all do too, that, which entice me to ask this question about eternal justification, who take faith as the act of believing. And in that regard, it is a grace that God gives us that's totally imperfect, correct? I mean, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Amen. Lord, look at Thomas. Yeah, right. So, mm -hmm. There you that, go. Faith, that faith does not bring us anything more than a comfort and a joy or a knowledge, I guess, of those things we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because sometimes I, I see it and feel it. Unfortunately, a whole lot more times I don't. And that's the truth. Yeah. Rupert, Richard. Paul Paul said he had been revealed things that was unlawful for a man to speak. I can't fathom this. Yeah. I, I, I can't walk in that field. I, I just have to say, even so, it seemed good in my sight. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, I know, uh, faith, uh, they don't believe in your faith, is what I'm trying to say, I guess. Uh, because is 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 that uh, is that a when it says uh, walk in the spirit walk by faith mm -hmm. okay could that be classified as an act or work mm -hmm. walk in the spirit you fulfill not the Lust of the flesh, law of the flesh, whatever. Well, you walk by faith. Okay. If, if that's an act, we know that works has nothing to do. No matter whether it's mental or physical, mm -hmm. or any other kind, has to do anything with our eternal salvation. Or at least that's my view of that matter. And I'm so thankful I'm not justified by that kind of faith. Because some days I would not be justified at all. Well, that's the truth. But don't you find that's what most people believe? That they oh, are yeah. Justified? Yeah, that's what most people believe. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do it either. Uh, Duty faith. Absolutely. Well, for grace are you saved. That's one thing. But James says he giveth more grace. Yep. I think we've been on the road a little bit. We understand that statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quit, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Uh, Get your spurs off now. Uh, <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I thought. Uh, oh. I thought you might be having reference to our trip to Indiana. <laughs> uh, the, wouldn't take nothing for it, brother. I enjoyed it. Uh, mercy. So, but yeah, I think most people believe that. I, I do. I think they, um, they want, um, they want a works doctrine because it's pleasing to the flesh. Mm-hmm. They want to see a result. And they don't want to walk by faith. They want to walk by sight. Yeah, but after we've done all we can do, all we can say is we are unprofitable servants. That's right. That's it. So we fall back in the kittle of grace or we're not going to survive at all. That's right. I'd like to just ask one more thing about eternal children. Go ahead. Um, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Mm -hmm. Was there a Jacob? Or was that just a potential Jacob? Well, I it think was that a was Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> Actual Jacob. Yeah. So I think that I, I don't believe so that, was it that Jacob we were chosen was, in potentia. Yeah. What, uh, yeah, what do they call it? Propices or proplexes or something? Yeah, but I think you were more right the first time. Yeah, okay. I I'm, not, I'm not sure now. Don't, don't I, think I, I, I think I read it one time, but I can't remember. Yeah. <clears throat> Prolipsis. Prolipsis, maybe. But <clears throat> so there was a Jacob in Christ from all eternity. That was going to come and take a body of flesh, a flesh. in the, after when the time came. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. You know, I can live with that. <laughs> well, there are two different wounds that we have to consider. One was that of Eve of the Adamic race, mm -hmm. and the other was typified as that of Sarah of the eternal covenant. And mm -hmm. Paul said, please God separate me from my mother's womb. He wasn't talking about the maternity ward down to the hospital at Damascus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Little side joke I heard somebody say this week. I want to be like Saul. I want to be on the road of de de mask us. <laughs> no, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> de mask us. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Me too. John, would you repeat what you just said? I'm trying to process that. About the two wombs? Yes. And what you said about that text. <sighs> That separated me from my mother's womb. You said he's not I mean, talking about his yeah. earthly mother, right? No. No. When he said he separated me from my mother's womb, immediately I did not confer with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. So I was not talking about the, the corporeal or carnal birth, mm -hmm. but that was the making manifest of his interest in the covenant God had in revealing to him as he was one of the eternal children. Amen. That's when Amen. Christ was formed in him and made manifest. That's great. He, I... re he, he revealed his son in me, not to me. Right. That's a good point, and I honestly never thought of it that way. That, that's a great point. I hope I'm not in error on that. It, sounds, it makes a lot of sense uh, now that you mentioned it, but I had, I'll be honest, I had taken it to be a separation from his earthly mo mother's womb and then the calling by grace. But what you just said makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It do, anything, don't it? If there's anything there, thank the Lord for it. Mm -hmm. That, 
knocking sound, Brother Robert? I don't know. You hear it? Yeah, I hear it. I hear it too. I didn't know. I just thought maybe it was me. I don't know what it is. It sounds like somebody beating a drum. I'm like, yeah, they... ready to run out of diesel. Sounds like a squirrel eating a hickory nut. <laughs> Well, I don't know what it is. But, so. We got an Indian beat back behind it, doesn't it? Even yeah. Though... <laughs> you got one of them cats a drum set. <laughs> <laughs> I was making sure it wasn't me. I muted me so that it it would, and I heard it, so it's not me. Who knows? I thought it might be somebody trying to get in, but it's not. Still tried to. I just hit mine it. to see if it made a difference, but it doesn't. So. There it went. Run out of that diesel fuel. <laughs> That's uh, not good, brother. <laughs> I'd like to pose a question to all of you. What is Wait. your opinion? What is your opinion on devotional Bibles? Because I went to Goodwill again, and when I walk in, I they have a section where they have Bibles, and they just give them away. And I saw this big Bible, and I went, oh, this is interesting. And normally, if I had to pay for it, I wouldn't have taken it. But I did take it. Because it... <laughs> That's just the Jew in me. That's an understatement. <laughs> That's just the Jew in me. You know, oh, free. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I never really liked devotional Bibles, but I was curious about this one. And if it annoys me enough, I'll just bring it back to them. Yeah. You know? You have daily devotionals? Is that what you're saying? No, it, it it's going through the Bible in one year. Oh, okay. Oh, it's one it of them one-year Bibles? Okay. Yeah, January oh, it should be all right. I've never... I, I had one one time. I can't remember what I did with it. I got mine mixed in with the J.C. Whitney catalog. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had a, I had one of those one year Bibles. I can't remember what translation it was. It was all right. I tried it. It uh, it didn't quite work out to to be able to for me to do it, but it was interesting. Well, I tell you, I, I, I downloaded an app on my iPhone, uh, King James Bible. Mm -hmm. You can you can click the audio and a guy reads it with a very pleasant British voice. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's nice to go to sleep listening to that. Yeah. You sound like the rest of my congregation, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you think they go to sleep, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, the guy say, uh, I must not have preached very good today because Brother Jim didn't go to sleep today. <laughs> Struck up his curiosity. Yeah, uh, brother, brother Frank Holland, he was deacon there at Snow Hill Church. Mm -hmm. I never knew a meeting when he didn't go to sleep during the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd tell you sometimes he 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 if, if he stayed awake through one, it it was it was a a, a miracle all the way through. But he'd tell you, he said, it's it's not because I disagree with you or because I don't think it's good, but 
He said, I just can't help it. I just, <laughs> just sit here and, and I'm not doing anything and I just fall asleep. <laughs> I, I had a member like that too. That I mean, 10 minutes into the message, he'd have his head laying on his chest and he'd be sound asleep. Mm. There was a story they told about <laughs> William Gadsby over in England. He he was preaching, kid was cutting up in there, and he said, William, sit down. I'd tell your father to, to sit you down, but he's sitting there asleep. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, John Bride and that book, mm -hmm. uh, my brother back in the 70s had that little book reprinted. Yep. And I did... I, you may know this, Robert, but it seems like to me that John Bryan came over to the USA and he held a week's meeting in the First Baptist Church of Columbus, Mississippi. Really? And it was in it was in the minutes, and that's why Elvis had it printed so he could hand it out to those members of the First Baptist Church <laughs> to, show, to show them what they what they used to believe. How about that's the that? First time I came in contact with it. I never knew that Brian ever, I, I don't know anything about Brian's history at all, other than that he was a, a co-laborer with John Gill. Yeah. Now, I just happened to have Cathcart right here at my disposal. <laughs> uh, and we can see if Cathcart has anything about Brian. I don't, I never did know much about him other than both of them. And he has two paragraphs. Kettering about 1703. When he was very young, the Savior found him and revealed his love in him. And he united by baptism with the immersed church of Kettering, by which he was called to the ministry. After preaching for a short time in the country, he went to London in 1730 to enter on the pastorate of the church in St. Paul's Alley, Cripplegate. He remained at this position 35 years and left it for his heavenly reward, February 21st, 1765. Huh. His doctrinal sentiments were in exact harmony with those of Dr. Gill. The doctor preached his funeral sermon, and in it said, quote, I might take notice of his natural and acquired abilities, his great understanding, clear light, and sound judgment in the doctrines of the gospel, and the great deep things of God, and of his zeal, skill, courage, in vindicating important truths published by him to the world, and by which he being dead yet speaketh. Mr. Bryan was the author of 24 sermons published separately at various times during his ministry and 14 pamphlets and larger works. And that's all Mr. Cathcart has to say about him. Uh, but I didn't know anything about him other than, than his association with Gill early on. Uh, and that little booklet, Eternal Justification. Yep. And then Brother Pound turned me on to a couple of his other larger writings. That's the only one I've ever read is Eternal Justification. It's been so long ago, I can't remember all of his arguments. Me either. <laughs> I think I got a copy of it here, but I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you what I was in it. He... Um, The one, the one that Pound gave me. I bet it, I bet that's the one Elvis had reprinted, a little paperback. No, that's one. Well, yeah, I, I got the little paperback from Bill. I got that from Bill Lee years ago. Okay. And I think that is the one that Elvis had printed. I bet it is. And, um, but but Pound gave me Brian's treatise on various subjects. It was called. And uh, it's about uh, 200 pages, I guess, maybe more than that. Uh, 
out whether I've still got a copy of it or not. Now he gave me a photocopy of it. I remember it. I remember it being interesting, but I remember it also being hard to read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I thought he I thought he if I recall right he made he made his arguments pretty clear of what he was trying to say. But I might have to go back and read Trot's article again too, and uh, see if I can uh, make more sense out of what he was saying. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Um, Let's see here. My thoughts on justification and then views of justification defended. Yeah, I was making sure that second article was in there. The the vindicate the the his defense of his uh, justification on my thoughts. Hmm. Now, if I remember right, and I might be totally wrong on this, brethren, but because they didn't have it. There is a card catalog at the Library of Congress. And if I remember right, it is for Trot on Justification published the, that is a pamphlet or uh, Elder Plummer Waters of Maryland published Trot's work on justification there as a pamphlet. Hmm. And um, seems that everything I wanted at the Library of Congress they didn't have. So they had the card catalog for it, but they didn't have um, the book booklet. So I don't know what it contained, whether it was anything different, whether it was written um, to expand on that, because there's no listing for it in Stars Baptist Bibliography. There's only that listing at, at the... Um, Library of Congress card catalog. And they said the volume wasn't on the shelf when I asked for it. I used to, on my days off, go to Washington, D.C. and go to the Library of Congress. Oh, really? Yeah. They, don't, they yeah. don't have the Baptist bookstore at Rochester, New York anymore, do they? No, I don't believe so. They moved the um, historical society that was there down to Georgia. Georgia? We're, we're, yeah. about, we're, about, <coughs> we're about in Georgia, you know? What's that Baptist college down there? Emory. Emory College? Yeah, it's at Emory. Okay. Well, I went to Rochester one time and in the curator's office is where they had all of the valuable antique books or whatever. Right. And uh, it, I went with some other folks and uh, he, had, he was sitting behind his desk and he had told us to go in and look around, just be careful. He's gonna step out for a little bit while we looked at things. He had all these books. I mean, things I'd never seen, you know, uh, Baptist and so forth. And I happened to walk over and look at his desk and the book he had been reading. And it was, I swear, amidst to all of this knowledge, he's reading the plight of the African-American in an American society. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. That wasn't Jim Lynch, was it? I don't know who it was, but I don't know what the name of the creator was at that time. But I thought all of the stuff he could just read and read and read, he's reading this 
stupid book. <laughs> <coughs> well, Jim, Jim Lynch is who I dealt with there. He was the curator when I was dealing with him. And uh, I don't know what his feelings was about anything. I don't know anything about that, but he always treated me with respect and really um, well, he just he just me out. He dismissed himself and told us to look around and be careful what we handled. And I remember that's where he had a little book there where uh, you probably know, but uh, it's a little it was a small book and it was about the baptism of George Washington. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by John Gano. Yeah, 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 yeah. The um, yeah. I always wanted to go up there, but I never got to. Because when, when Jim was running it, he uh, he would, he was pretty well on top of things. I don't know how it's being managed now. I really don't. I haven't talked to him. So it's now located at Emory University. That's yep. pretty close around Atlanta somewhere, isn't it? I thought so, yeah. Yep. It's about five hours from here. There you go. Well, I'm uh, I'm going to call them. Uh, well, sometime soon, for the end of the year, I hope to to contact them, see if they've got any of the um, Wabash District Association minutes. during the time Parker would have been part of them and Union Association of Texas during the, the time he would have been there. I figure Fort Worth Seminary has probably had more of those than Rochester or Emory, but I thought I'd check anyway. I want to believe Wake Forest over in North Carolina had a pretty good library at one time, didn't they? I have been there. Maybe. I've been there in Louisville. Yeah, I've never, I never was there. Went through there many times. I, I, I went to, to the library at Louisville Seminary. Went to the library at Wake Forest. Um, Never went to New Orleans. There was a place outside of Nashville too. I, I don't remember. And that's where I got a bunch of Xerox, a bunch of copies of those books you were talking about, uh, the General Baptist in England and mm -hmm. all of those uh, 1600 <laughs> writers. Uh, yeah. You, you could, uh, I think it was like five cents a page to copy them, you know. And of course my son's got all of them now, but I, uh, what was that Christianity? What was that one about the General Baptist? Christianismus Primitivus? Yeah, yeah. That's I got a copy of that. Well, you can download that now. Can you? Yeah. And uh, so you don't have to worry about that. I went to the um, Historical Commission of the Southern Baptist there in Nashville last year. Yeah. That, or this year, excuse me. That's what I'm talking about. Me and Elvis went there once and made a bunch of copies of uh, that stuff. Well, they got a new policy. They're downtown now in the, the big, tall building. Uh -huh. And uh, you can pay $10 and copy or photograph anything. Really? Yep. Huh. I wouldn't know when to stop. <laughs> $10 a day. I'll tell you, I knew when to stop. <laughs> when the day runs out. <laughs> when, when, 
when when they're getting ready to close. <laughs> I kept the guy there ten minutes because I I said, oh come on man, I need uh, I just got a few pages left <laughs> in this uh, dissertation. Uh, he said, "That's all right. I got work to do." Well, I, so, I appreciate the thought that have been offered tonight. I got some things to think about and look at, and I'm, that always uh, helps me. Well, well that like does. A, I'll tell you what: when you get something to think about, it means something. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The um, I was talking. Uh, the Elder Wiley this week, Brother John. Oh, how's he doing? He's doing good. Uh, he finished. He finished Bartley's Christ Man in Type. Great. And he said, "I agreed with most of it, and I've got several things to think about now." That's mm -hmm. a good thing. And I said, "Well, that's all right. That's nothing wrong with that." What was the name of the book? Bartley, Christ Man in Type, little green paperback. West Track Publications. You don't have a copy? I don't think I ever saw that one. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> we can supply you. Uh, uh, green, your green cover? Yeah. I don't think I've got that. Most everything I've got from uh, Welsh Strike, Brother Ray copied and said to me. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. You um, you shoot me your address and I'll get you a copy of this. Okay. Here's the trial of Joe by Duran, Brother Gregory. Uh, Brother Jim Poole gave me that in 2010 when I was up there. Okay. Sure did. So he thought it was the best book on Joe. Hard to beat. Yeah. That's the truth. It is. Hey, what? His his book on Joseph and predestination. I'm talking about Brother Poole. Not very. That's yeah. a good work, also. Yeah, it is. Yep. He, uh, that, that was the substance of a, a bunch of sermons he preached on yep. that. Yeah. That he yeah, had he published them in the remnant, didn't he? Yeah, he wrote it up in the remnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He preached them at Snow Hill, and then uh, I don't know, maybe a year afterwards, he put them in the rem. He wrote them up and put them in the remnant. Yeah, might have been two years. I don't know. It was a while. Well, I know that I kept that on my nightstand for about a year after he gave it to me and I read that thing. That was, I thought it was a great work. <laughs> there was a fellow walked in the meeting house two months ago at Wells Tracks. I didn't know who he was. Come to find out he, he lived, lives not far from the meeting house and he had attended, uh, some when Brother Chet was alive and uh, was glad to see we were holding a meeting, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, uh, asked me if I knew about that little book of gems. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's like, he said, uh, he said, uh, Brother Dirks gave me a copy of that. And he said, I've wore it out. He said, the pages are coming apart. <laughs> wow. I said, well, if you think that much of it, you show up next month and I'll give you another copy. Oh, <laughs> and I did. I, I've got very few left, but I thought if a man thinks enough of it to wear it out, where the pages are coming. If he's got an appetite like that, feed him. That's right. He needs another copy of it. Yes. Uh, brother, brother Dirks, I, I miss him too because he always sent me those uh, uh, articles, you know, each week. Uh, yeah. Preached or what he was studying, and uh, yeah, I sure miss receiving those.
Yep, I understand. Uh, one of the best sermons I, uh, I, it'd be up there top number one. He preached on the, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, that just thrilled my soul when I read that article and heard it. He, he preached and acted, it may be on the Welsh Track uh, webpage. It might, yeah. Well, brother and I hate to break this up, but I'm going to have to, I didn't sleep good last night. I didn't sleep at all, brother. <laughs> well, I was about the same way. I mean, I woke, I fell asleep at about 7.30 in the chair. Yeah. Woke up at 10.15. Woke up again about... 11.30. That sounds like me. And I don't think I went back back to sleep, really. I, I just maybe dozed a little bit. Seems like I always wake up about 4.30 for the night, but they set the clock back, now it's 3.30. And I don't know what to do that first hour. <laughs> mm. Well, 3.30 is my, about my getting up time anyway, sometime between 3.30 and 4. Yeah. That hour, boy, it kills me for about a month. Me too. I mean, it. That I'm convinced that's why I didn't sleep last night. It's because he's messing with this time. You know, it talks about that in Daniel. Does it? Yeah, it says they think they think to change times and laws. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I thought you'd go say time, times and half a time. <laughs> no, time. They think to change times and laws. <laughs> Uh, well, listen, Lord, brother, good, good. Lord, I don't thank everybody. I enjoyed it. Lord, Lloyd Wall said, uh, first time I ever was at an absolute meeting down there at Saints Rest Church in Dallas. And Jim Poole and Peggy and, and Brother Jim Ward and uh, Elder Lloyd Wall from East Texas, we and me, we were all staying there at uh, Elder Morris's. And Brother Lloyd wanted to know what everybody thought about that. They think the change, because this was the weekend that we were supposed to fall back. So he said, you know, that's in the Bible there. They say change <laughs> times and laws. Change <laughs> times and laws, yeah. Uh, so, well, I have enjoyed it as well. And Lord willing, we shall do it next week. Amen. Um. We'll see what happens. If I if I forget, Brother Robert, I hope you all have a good meeting this coming week. Well, thank you. Thank yes. you, Brother Wayne. I hope so, too. Uh, we'll see what happens. It'll be as the Lord intends it. Absolutely. He shows up, it'll be a good one. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Sure will. So I'm going to say good night, everyone. Good night, Brother Robert. And night, y'all brother. have a blessed time, and we'll night, see brother. some of you at least in the morning. All right. Fairly well. Adios. Bye-bye.